Famed artist Norman Rockwell is known for depicting scenes of American nostalgia. This painting here showing a family on Thanksgiving appeared on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post in 1943. Now, if there had been political chatter around the table then, it likely would have focused on the policies of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Quite a different conversation now as we get ready for the first Thanksgiving since a divisive election. In Bloomington, at the home of the Hoosiers, freshman Mason Fondo is eager to head home to the left coast, the west coast. I think what I'm looking forward to the most is probably just like seeing my family and my dog and the food I'm looking forward to as well. <laughs> Michaela DeVerry and Coco Owsley are working on a class project and can't wait for Thanksgiving. I haven't seen my dog in a while, so I'm excited to see him. This is him. His name's Frank. I'm looking forward to seeing my family. This will be the first time I get to see my grandma. Michaela and Coco are heading to their hometowns in southern Indiana for the holiday weekend. My family is um, more Republican. Um, personally, I wanted Kamala to win. And both expect politics to come up around the dinner table on Thanksgiving one way or another. Probably my, my grandfather is, he likes Trump. So yeah, I'm mentally preparing myself. <laughs> I know my family's kind of split. Some of them are more Republican, some of them more Democrat. Yeah, sometimes it can get heated with conversations with politics, but kind of just, just changing the subject. I don't think a lot of us know what to expect right now. We turn to IU psychology professor Edward Hurt for insight on navigating through this first big family get together since an historic and polarizing election. There are multiple perspectives on everything. and I think that a lot of times we get into a mindset where we think there's one way to think about it and everyone else is wrong. Professor Hurt offers three pointers to keep in mind. First, be aware of and accept there are things out of our control. If we can sort of accept those things that are beyond our control and move on and just worry about the stuff that we can control, I think that gives us at least grounding, right? And then we can make some decisions from that. Second, give respect to get respect. Like if you listen to me, if you acknowledge that I we may not agree on that and that's okay, I can do that with you. I don't have to win you over. I don't have to persuade you. I don't have to show you where you're wrong. It's a mindset Michaela plans to embrace. Like letting others speak without interrupting them and like getting like aggressive. That's not good. And third, remember the essence of the holiday. But again, to keep in mind just the idea of this. It's the holiday. We're here to celebrate each other, to be together, and maybe those things should take precedence in this situation, and this isn't the time or place for some of those other things to happen. I'm, I'm really excited. Mason believes it's the approach his family will take when they sit down to dinner. It's something we don't like, like to talk about that much. We just kind of stray away from it, talk about stuff we're enjoying and like things that are you know, going on in our real life. We can always think about the things that divide us, and I think that was an issue throughout the election, right, of the things that divide people. But I think we can also think about the things that bind us together. Happy Thanksgiving? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and one more interesting tidbit for you. The National Library of Medicine cites a study showing politically diverse Thanksgiving dinners were 35 to 70 minutes shorter than dinners where everyone shared similar political opinions.